All right, so what we'll be showing you today is the optical sensor, uh, the background suppressing photoelectric switch. Uh, this is part of our lab volt training equipment that I'm showing you here uh, on the bottom left hand corner there. So as far as a little bit of a close up here, what you would see is that on the end of this, the, uh, the snorkel, whatever the uh, uh, arm there is an Allen Bradley right sight uh, uh, background suppressing uh, a photoelectric sensor. It's a B2 EF, B1 MP, BE, A2, as you can see there. All right. So this is activated with either 10, or sorry, 11 to 30 volts DC. Uh, what you'll see down below here is that the two loads there, uh, they're actually provided a uh, positive it. As you can see, they're common. The DOD, LO, just kind of mean kind of the load that's on the normally open, normally closed. Now, in this case, we're actually not going to use the normally open, normally closed on the sensor to uh, be used on our uh, control system. However, it does put 100 milliamps out. Uh, we may need to go through and trigger something that requires a higher ampage. And so what happens with this lab volt component is it actually will be using that sensor to go through and trigger a relay. Uh, the relay uh, actually has the common already wired to the uh, positive as you can see down below you'll see the positive will either trigger that white or black and is showing the load in the bottom right hand corner there so it's going to go through uh, the um, uh, relay there will either go be normally closed or be providing uh, a source or if it's normally the normally closed closes then you would get the source there so when it gets triggered it's going to go to go through and close that now, as far as the response on, it's one millisecond response on the sensor. However, I don't have any specs on the relay itself, but the relay would be less, uh, somewhat slower than that. Now, as far as on the back side of the sensor, we'll see here in just a moment, I'll show you a video of it. Uh, the uh, sensor is a kind of a, a, a threaded uh, 18 millimeter thread. Uh, it's 35 millimeter deep. And the idea is that you could go through and put that into some type of uh, surface that would be detecting something in front of it. All right. It's a general purpose sensor. Uh, it can actually handle or uh, work in uh, environments from 5 to 95 percent humidity, uh, non-condensing. Obviously, if it condenses, it would actually fog up that sensor. Now, as far as the LEDs, there's actually three LEDs, a green, a yellow, and an orange. The green actually shows up a little bit above the trademark symbol uh, on the sensor there in the top right-hand corner. Uh, the yellow is the center sensor. Uh, the yellow sensor will tell us that um, the uh, output has been triggered. The orange says it's kind of outside the margin. So you kind of explain this with the little graph down below on the bottom right-hand side. We have the, the 100 millimeter sensor here. And what this shows is that the uh, a white background target would be triggered at about four inches. However, it's right at the operation operating margin there. And what will happen is if you're just like a little bit outside the 3.9, maybe at four inches, what you would see is potentially the orange one would come on. And then when it was within the margin, the yellow would come on and would actually lock it. So this is kind of hysteresis that occurs so that when you were actually moving out of it, the yellow, um, the uh, might actually stay active. So the yellow LED may, um, uh, how does it go? So, so the orange is just kind of showing you that it's about to drop out or something is about to trigger the system. Or it also shows you your, your object might be a little bit outside of the uh, range. And it's really hard to kind of trigger that to manually here, but I'll see if I can do that. Uh, as far as high temperature washdowns, the idea is that this is oftentimes used in a food type of processing environment where they have to go back and sterilize the environment, hot water and so on. That So it's capable of withstanding that as well. So what is a, a background suppression uh, sensor? How does it work? Well, it has an emitter. And then what that emitter does is emits and it's going to shine against uh, the background surface. And then if it's some target comes in it, what happens is there's actually two sensing uh, sensors and what it allows us to do is kind of triangle it between those to kind of determine whether or not there's something in the path all right rather than just trying to detect the target in front of it the other thing about this is because it's comparing the background with the foreground it's less likely to be tripped by uh, uh, just uh, random light that may be coming some sunlight that might be uh, coming into that frequency of where it is uh, sensing now 
that's because it has that background surface. So it's looking for the background surface and it knows what the background, so the sun coming back is not going to trigger. It's just looking for the difference between what it is expecting at that maximum and that uh, target range there. All right, so I'm going to go through and show you how this operates, and we'll do a little bit of experimenting here. Let me go through and switch screens here, and we'll get the uh, camera running here. So what you'll see here is that the green light is on saying that it is powered. What I have is negative going to the sensor as well as to each of the lamps there. Uh, my hot live wire is coming into the sensor. So this is actually a three wire sensor where you have uh, some type of power going to the sensor. Um, your positive and your negative, and then you have type some type of signal. In this case, we have a normally closed and normally open, so we actually have two uh, potential uh, returns here. And as I said before, the positive is wired to the common of the relay, so we have right now power going to the normally closed, and that's powering my green light. If I trigger this, what happens is the relay closes, and therefore it's going to light up the red light. So what we're going to do is look at some of these different surfaces and see the distances at which they trip. So we already said the white distance should be about four inches. This green yellow, I believe if I measured that, that that's uh, right about four inches. It's hard to see with this, but it, it is four inches. So as I bring this up, what will happen right there between the green and yellow, it will trip it off. Um, and as you see there, it actually stays on. And if you can see the lights going on, on you see the orange and yellow white. I'm not exactly sure if you can see that. So I'm kind of moving outside of the margin. It's kind of hard to find it. So they're outside the margin, but it's actually keeping it on. Okay. Now, when I come up, it, I, I can't get it to do this. I'm, I'm sure I can't. Um, yeah. So the orange is tripping it. And then it really needs that last light in order to say that we are going to stay in that target. So the target coming inside. So the, the real reason that uh, kind of show this is that there's different surfaces can do different things. So this is just the plain uh, wooden side. And if I bring this up here, th there it goes. It trips off at four inches. Uh, I have a, uh, a shiny side, a dull black side, and I also have um, a depolarizing, well, uh, a depolarizing, well, just the retroreflective surface. We'll come back to that. But I've got this shiny black side. And what's interesting about the shiny black side is if I bring this up here, um, let's see if I get it to do it. I was doing it the other day. Oh, there. It's actually triggering at somewhat shorter distance. So sometimes the color of the object can go through. They're finally locked in right there. So I'm way above that red line. So um, that that shiny black surface might be required a little bit closer. Uh, so let's go through and use this uh, metallic shiny side. So I'm going to bring that up. And you'll see that it triggers a little bit sooner. Maybe it's the same but between that green and yellow. Uh, I've got my dull black side. And if I use the dull black side and bring it up, it triggers there at the four inches. So that shiny side uh, does create a little bit of an issue um, as far as triggering. There now, now it's triggering like it should. There, this is what it was doing yesterday. Trigger a little bit sooner, and the reason it may trigger a little sooner, and I've got a little example to show why that is. But uh, what was the last one? Oh yeah, this. So this actually is for the retroreflective ed. Make sure this is aiming straight down. Maybe that was my issue here. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up, and it triggers a little bit, about the same four inches. All right, so now what I'm going to do is try this shiny side again. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the white side, and the idea here is that if I was able to hold this at the right distance, right, where it was off, uh, the idea is that um, I can bring a, sub, a, a material very close to that surface, and it will still trip it. So it knows the difference between that surface. Now, I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to drag this one across it. You see that, yeah, it's, I was worried that sometimes this shiny area might get a, but it is actually able to tell that, differentiate that, even that thinnest amount of distance, uh, if I get it in the right, right zone there. All right. And there it's the eight. Now, there is one other issue with this, and um, I will show that to you here in just a moment. But why don't we do one more experiment here with the shiny side. Um, what you can see sometimes is the shiny side can potentially trip it off. And, and the reason is, um, is that, um, if I can get it to do it, let's go a little sooner, is that, remember there's two sensors here? So what's happening is that other sensors, is like only focusing right here at four inches, but, um, and then it, it um, 
you know the beam zooms in and it kind of crosses well what happens is a shiny surface outside of this is potentially could go through and trip it okay um, so just let you be aware of a shiny sur surface can uh, cause that range to kind of behave a little bit longer but the point that I really wanted to point out and I'm going to show you a different uh, well I'll show you the end of the sensors so there is um, two sensors on here there's one in the there's the emitter on one side and then the uh, receiver on the other side. The one thing I wanted you to notice here is there's no color here. So this is outside the visible light band. Um, it's probably using ultraviolet there um, or s infrared probably. And so infrared can come from other sources, you know, from the sunlight and so on. So it's possible that um, that could trigger it, but because we're using these two s uh, receiving sensors, it knows the difference between a distant light and the light from here. So. Um, what I wanted to kind of point out is that because of that, if I can get in here just right, um, in between here there's actually a dead zone. And I can actually kind of move in that dead zone without actually tripping it. And I'll show you what I mean by turning over the, uh, the sensor here. So if you look at the bottom side of the sensor, uh, turn this to the right angle, you might be able to see it here. Uh, which is which? I, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look real close and I don't want the infrared shining in my eye. So uh, probably not going to hurt me. But uh, the idea is one of these is going to go through and be the, that emitter side. And one side is going to be the receiving side. All right. I'm guessing that this is probably the emitter side. And that's the sensor side. Um, just I'm, I'm, the idea is that I'm blocking all the light off from both the sensors so it doesn't know the difference, right? up here it would potentially know the difference between a far and scope. Now typically you don't move an object this way through the sensor. This sensor works with either an object moving this way or an object moving into its zone like this way. Okay. So that's the uh, photo reflective sensor. Uh, sorry, the, uh, not the photo reflective sensor. That's the background suppressing sensor uh, as you probably saw in your um, uh, readings there. All right. All right. So we'll show you one more sensor. Oh, we got a few more sensors to show. Uh, one more optical sensor, I should say, and we'll get that up shortly.